In this video, we'll be talking about cell cycle checkpoints. And this video is quite detailed video, so stay tuned till the end and you would get a total explanation about cell cycle checkpoints. Now, there are three cell cycle checkpoints that we are going to talk about. This operates in G1S transition, G2 to M transition and within the M phase. The first checkpoint that we are going to talk about is G1S transition checkpoint, also known as the restriction point. So in this particular restriction point or in this checkpoint, cell assess its environment. Cell looks for growth factor, growth conditions and understands whether it is optimal condition for dividing or not. Also, it looks on monitors for the internal damages like DNA damage. So obviously, it's one of the most important checkpoint or the DNA damage checkpoint. So imagine there is a DNA damage that has accumulated in G1 phase. And in this phase, if the DNA damage persists, then the consequence is detrimental because there could be replication blockage and there could be faulty chromosome segregation eventually. That is why there should be checkpoints which can possibly block the transition of the cell cycle. And this would give the cell enough time to repair its damage. That is why G1S checkpoint is really useful. Let's see how this checkpoint operates at the molecular level. So the cell has to first sense the DNA damage, then pause the cell cycle give the give give itself enough time to repair the damage and then again resume the cell cycle so one of the key thing that the cell has to do right now is to pause the cell cycle and that can happen in several ways but before that cell senses the dna damage with specific dna damage sensors like atm atr etc so all of these are kinase molecules so which can phosphorylate downstream targets such as check 2 and check 1 kinase now, check 2 kinase actually phosphorylates P53, which is a tumor suppressor protein. Its inherent goal is to suppress the cell cycle. Anyway, phosphorylated P53 is free and it cannot be degraded. Generally, under normal circumstances, P53 would be degraded and basically MDM2 degrades the P53 in ubiquitin proteasome mediated pathway. But when there is a damage happening in the DNA, P53's goal is to stay protected and then prevent further damage. So P53 would perform specific task. P53 activates P21, which is a cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor. So it would inhibit cyclin CDK complexes, thereby pausing the cell cycle progression from G1 to S. Now let us quickly recap and resume. So P53 would pause the cell cycle, give it enough time to repair the DNA, for example, via homologous recombination based repair. The cell would try to basically <coughs> repair the damage. But imagine the damage is not repairable, then what happens? In that case, the cell would choose the hard way of undergoing apoptosis. It is better not to segregate a faulty chromosome than dying because once these mutations accumulate in the genome, it would increase the risk of tumor formation. Okay, so now we understand what really happens in the DNA damage checkpoint in the G1S transition. So basically, just to summarize, DNA damages are sensed by kinases, which recruit P53. P53 further activates cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors and thereby cyclines are inhibited. So cyclin D CDK4 complex which operate at G1 phase is inhibited and second cyclin E CDK2 which is important for S phase transition is also blocked. As a result the entry into the S phase is blocked so the cell cannot move from G1 to S phase. So this is the goal of G1 S checkpoint. So these are the summarized point for G1 S checkpoint. Anyway, PRB, which is another tumor suppressor protein, plays critical role in this checkpoint as well. I have a different video on PRB. Click on the i button to get that video. Now, next we talk about the G2M checkpoint. As the name suggests, it operates in the G2M transition point. But what does it look for? It looks for DNA damage 
point number one and point number two it looks for unreplicated dna so basically if the replication doesn't happen properly in the s phase and there is some sort of unreplicated dna that can also be sensed using this checkpoint and even after replication there is some damage which requires or let's say there is some mutation dna break that occurred during the replication phase that can also be sensed using this checkpoint so let's see how this checkpoint operates at a molecular level so entry from g2 to m phase this particular uh, transition requires the activity of cyclin b and cdk1 this is the mitotic cyclin now any dna damage would anyway be sensed with molecular sensors like atm atr that can activate check one kinase which inhibits cdc25 now cdc25 is a crucial phosphatase that activates the cyclin b cdk1 act, uh, cdk1 complex so obviously when cdc25 is inhibited with the help of check one kinase then this activation step is abrogated once cyclin b cdk1 is not activated the transition from g2 to m phase cannot happen moreover check one kinase can also phosphorylate p53 which activates p21 and thereby the cyclin b cdk1 activity can actually be inhibited now this is really crucial because if there is dna breakage or unreplicated dna it's not wise to enter the m phase and condense the chromosome because again we know when the separation would happen there could be a faulty separation that is detrimental for the cell that is why pausing the cell again recruiting the repair machinery at this point is again important then we talk about the m phase checkpoint which op obviously operates in the m phase more precisely in the metaphase and the anaphase transition now the cell ensures at this point that chromosomes are properly aligned in the spindle fibers because before the division division or segregation of the chromosome this alignment is important proper tension has to be sensed at this point otherwise segregation would be unequal so this checkpoint helps to prevent any errors in chromosome distribution in the daughter cells so what happens in the anaphase is chromosome segregation and this is a tightly regulated process because a defective segregation might lead to detrimental consequences now in the late metaphase what happens is there are anaphase promoting complex which generally inhibits securin and basically separase is now free so separase can actually separate these structural maintenance of chromosome proteins and once these proteins are gone the chromosomes now can be separated properly and that really happens in during the anaphase state this is the normal scenario let's see if there is an unequal tension so this tension tension sensing is really important so this is the normal situation and let's say there is an unequal tension so there are a bunch of tensor tension sensors sitting near the region of the kinetochore and that can trigger the activation of many molecules such as mad1 mad2 so these mad proteins are actually important sensors that can inhibit apc now if apc is inhibited that there is nobody to degrade securin now once securin is not degraded securin holds the separase complex and separase complex cannot separate it and thereby the chromosome separation doesn't happen at this point so again it waits till this tension normalize and then the segregation happens so this would ensure an equal segregation of chromosome now this concept that we discussed all the checkpoints are nicely described in the uh, molecular biology of the cell by harvey lodish and all these concepts are taken from this book so you can quickly visit that chapter and take a quick revision so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up you can get more notes and flashcards in our facebook page or instagram page you can support our channel using super thanks you can pay via paytm paypal or upi see you in next video